Hi Francois, how are you doing? Guess where I am? Sydney. What an amazing city. That's our new stop for the 360th anniversary world tour. That's great. I'm really happy for you. But if you have heard of a thing called Tan difference. Oh, sorry about that. And thank you for the postcard from Cape Town. That looked amazing. Enjoy Australia. All right, better go then. Bye. Go, go, go. Welcome to this new episode and welcome to Australia. Today we're taking you on a journey to find out how innovation can transform the production chain leading to more sustainable construction. From cutting edge solutions to digital tools and greener energy solutions, we'll take you through all the steps that help build a more responsible future for all. Are you ready? Let's go. On this episode, we're heading to a stunning home to meet interior designer Natasha Allen. We'll explore her smart material choices, impact both design and sustainability. So tell us about this beautiful home. Well, we're very lucky. We're actually sitting in our HIA Award finalist display home here. We designed it specifically to appeal to as many people as possible. So we're looking at very nice, even tones, natural stone, just to give that real feel of elegance, producing a very good custom product for this space. Can you tell us more about the selection process when it comes to materials? What are you looking for? I'm looking for a construction method or process that is going to deliver a beautiful product on site, but also that's going to help enhance the livability of my home for the length of the lifetime of the home for our clients in particular. What we're trying to do is make sure that the builds are very well insulated so that the temperature inside the home stays as regular as possible. CSR Hebel's external product is a very good example of that. We're looking at a lightweight product, easy to build with. It has very good insulation properties as well. And how much attention do you pay to the manufacturing process in terms of sustainability? How sustainable does it have to be? You can't really have a sustainable product without a sustainable production process to it. So I think they go hand in hand here. As Natasha mentioned, sustainable manufacturing is just as important as the materials themselves. Now let's explore how digitalizing the customer experience can not only help clients make the right choice for sustainable construction, but also improves the entire production chain. We are at the CSR headquarters, now part of the Saint-Gobain family, to find out more. So Brent, tell us how you improve operational efficiency by integrating sustainability into the production process. So here in uh, CSR we've implemented Integrated Business Planning or IBP and what that really is is an end-to-end -end value chain operating model encompassing product, demand signals, supply requirements, production needs, right through to sales and distribution. And what that does is put the customer needs at the heart of our, our operation. So how does sustainability fit into all this? So with all the intelligence that we're gathering about what our customers want, where they want it and how many they want, allows us to better optimise our production plans, build better transport plans, ultimately lowering our emissions and our uh, use of raw materials, which then becomes a win-win for CSR, our customers and the environment. From machine learning to robotics, next we investigate how automation can lead to more sustainable manufacturing. Could you tell us about the sustainability benefits of more automation and robotics within manufacturing? By introducing the robots, we've been able to lower our energy consumption. And we've been able to reduce less waste. The process is more stable. We have more precision, therefore delivering better quality products for our end users and our customers. Some of the improvements that have been introduced into the factory are LED lighting. We have an acoustic imager, which detects leaks, which helps save air and energy consumption. We have a suggestion scheme in the plant where employees can suggest any items, whether it be improvements in the manufacturing or improvements in sustainability. Technology and innovation are crucial to sustainable manufacturing, and so are greener solutions and plant upgrades. And that's what we're going to find out next. Here at Weatherill Park, we'll see how investments in solar energy and calcination plant upgrades are raising the bar. 
We are at Weatherall Park today, where we produce plasterboard, compounds, and cement board. So we're here to talk about sustainable construction, which means more sustainable manufacturing practices. So how do you go about it here? Sustainability means a lot, but I guess when you bring it down to the fundamentals, we want to reduce waste, energy usage, water usage, to limit our impact on the environment. We've just invested a lot recently in a brand new calciner, in some solar panels, over 4,000 solar panels on the roofs here. That reduces about 2,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions a year for this site. That's amazing. And you've got this calcination plant facilities. What does it do exactly? Calcination is the step of the process where we take the raw gypsum and prepare it for the plasterboard line. The calcination plant delivers a 20% efficiency gain. So the investment we've made here allows us to be far more efficient. This really was a test case and we're very, very eager now to do the same thing at our other plasterboard facilities. Throughout this episode, we have seen how innovation, digital tools and renewable energy can transform the entire production chain. At Saint-Gobain, every step is taken to address today's challenges to build a better future. Next month, join François Gemel as he travels to China to find out how to leverage digital technology to become best in class.